Welcome, welcome, welcome to day two of Readers and Ritas at Home. Don't you worry, those sirens are not here to pick up your books. You are safe and sound with us for this rest of this day. Um, I'm really excited to uh, introduce our first panel of the day, but first let me go ahead and reintroduce myself to you guys. I'm Gwen Reyes. I'm the Events and Marketing Manager of Fresh Fiction. Um, welcome and thank you so much for joining us. This is our second Readers and Readers at Home. We're heartbroken that we couldn't be together in person this year. Hopefully in 2022, we'll be back in person in Texas. Um, but otherwise, we're, we have a fun day of virtual events and conversations planned for you guys. So make sure you stay tuned, hop in wherever you can and enjoy the, um, the authors. If you have any questions at any time, you can go ahead and put them into the Q&A feature or into the chat. And if you put them in the chat, I can actually put them on the screen. So if you wanna have a nice little shout out to one of our authors, you're more than welcome to do that. Um, and then uh, let's see, check. and then also at any point, you can go ahead and check our sponsors at our sponsors booths, as well as go into the expo it's this, after, this evening when we finish the rest of the day. Um, but first, I'd love to introduce our fabulous authors, two of the authors that are a part of the um, the compilation Mistletoe Christmas. It's an anthology, which is uh, a wonderful Christmas anthology where one four authors write about one party. So I'm really excited to dig into that. Um, but I'd love to introduce two of those authors, Janet McGregor and Erica Ridley, who are here to talk about a recipe for a Regency recipe. Ladies, thank you so much for joining today. Thank you for having us. So we are all calling from different locations all over the place. Before we get started, where are you guys calling from? Let's let's uh, just do some basics. I am in Minneapolis right now, and we're supposed to get one to three inches of snow this afternoon. So, oh my goodness! Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I am usually in Costa Rica, but I am in New York City, so that's been a fun change for me. <laughs> Absolutely, I love love it. New York. Yeah. Yeah, especially New York in winter. It's just like almost Christmas. It's so magical. <laughs> All right. Well, Erica, I'm going to throw this first question out to you. Um, could you tell us in three sentences or less a little bit about yourself? Um, let's see. Well, I already mentioned that I, I have lived in the rainforest of Costa Rica between two active volcanoes uh, for about a decade now. I love it there. I love mm -hmm. nature. Uh, and I love to travel and to eat. <laughs> oh man, I love Costa Rica so much. All right, Jana, what about you? Tell us a little bit about yourself in three sentences or less. Okay, I'm a recovering attorney. Um, <laughs> I split my time between Kansas City and Minneapolis. And um, my favorite things to do are um, take walks around the Mississippi, which is about a block away from me. And um, I love to shop online. <laughs> <laughs> What's your most recent purchase that you have? Um, I just bought a uh, leopard print sweatshirt on Amazon. It was perfect, just perfect. So I'm gonna wear that. I have another event this evening and I'm gonna wear that tonight, so. Oh man, that's gonna be so nice. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I love that. Um, okay, well, uh, so let's talk a little bit about how this book came about. Um, Jana, when uh, I first found out about it, you were the one that told me about it. So I'm gonna actually throw this question to you. Tell us a little bit about how you got involved with this book um, and how it all got started. Um, well, <clears throat> Christy Caldwell, who's, who's not here, and Eloisa, who's not here, had uh, lunch or dinner, I can't remember which one, um, at a Thai restaurant in New York City. And they, they were kicking around ideas, came up with that. And they said, oh, let's do this. And we'll invite Erica and Jana in on it. And so we quickly got our stories done. And then we started to edit each other's stories. Erica just tore mine apart. Oh, she no. She tore all pieces apart. <laughs> and um, we're all the richer for it. And so we just, you know, we came up, Eloisa, I think, came up with the idea of everybody having a connected story. Mm -hmm. And I mean, it's just, it's been so much fun to, to see it and see the reader's response to it. Everybody mm -hmm. seems to really, really enjoy the fact that they're in a house party together mm -hmm. and it just keeps on going and you get to see it from all these different perspectives. And it's, it's I'm, I'm really proud of it. I think it's a great, great book. Yeah, I just love the concept so much. Okay, Erica, I have to hear more about you just shredding everybody's uh, work and, making, <laughs> and then making this beautiful phoenix from this. <laughs> I'm a very literal person. So when people send me something and they're like, oh, I want your feedback. I'm like, okay. <laughs> and love so it. I put my, well, I also love feedback. I, I know mm -hmm. not all writers want 
criticism, but I'm the opposite. Like okay. I, I like every line to be criticized when I have the chance to actually fix the book because hearing about something after it's already published, there's nothing I can do now, right? right. So I, I kind of put that hat on and I'm like, okay. So, um, so I just treated it as if it were my book really. <laughs> And it was so funny with Jenna because she kind of she read mine as well and uh, and wrote me back and just just a really short you know email. She had like a couple of comments, but it was maybe two paragraphs at, at most. I don't remember. And I was like, oh, I left inline comments. Was I not supposed to do that? <laughs> I was like, I don't have to send it to you. She said, no, 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 you can send it to me. It's fine. Yeah, but yeah. I offered to spare her. <laughs> And I, you know what though, she was spot on everything. So it was, it was really good. She's an excellent writer and I felt very fortunate that she gave me feedback on that. So yeah. it's, it's all good. It's all good. As a matter of fact, I mean, we edited the whole thing together and wow. um, yeah. And it was, um, it was really fun. And, and, you know, not only do we have to keep track of the timeline of our own stories, but we had to keep track of everybody's uh, timeline and Erica's was is the only story that starts at the beginning and goes all the way to the end wow. and yeah and it's uh it's really I don't know I mean I just think it's fabulous how were those decisions made where was it like um yeah like Erica kind of just tell us a little bit about how your story got to be the one that went start to finish whereas other ones might have been just like a little a little snapshot honestly that was author preference we didn't really assign mm -hmm. time okay slots and in, in that kind of way um we did create like a like a story bible like a spreadsheet mm -hmm. that kind of had the main events and timeline that way we weren't all saying that things happened at, at different occasions right yeah like that. but but really anybody could have picked any time frame that they wanted how um how did or what did you do to stay in touch with each other while you were writing the stories uh, Jan. Everything, right, Jenna? Oh, okay. We FaceTime. Yeah, we did. <laughs> yeah, we did everything. We had phone calls. We had Zoom calls, as Erica said. Um, you know, and then toward the end of it, <clears throat> because we all had read it so many times, uh -huh. we got our assistants in there to read it to make certain. And and it's really it was it was wonderful that we did that because I mean they saw things that we didn't see, and it helped really clean up i think the the whole book it, it, it was fun and but one of the things that i think is so amazing about this it, you know the whole thing centers around this duke of greystoke who's really he's a a horrible um crotchety old man and in some of the stories he's really bad and then in some of the stories he's okay and and some of the i i read some um reviews and some readers had contacted me and said you know why why is he like this with with mm. erica's story but with eloise's he's so awful and in yours he's awful um and in christie's is like you know not that big of a deal and i and i think that's the way that we all are mm -hmm. i think that we show ourselves uh different aspects of our personality to people like with erica's um has a secondary character the mom who's good friends with the duke so obviously he's going to be very nice and jovial and and even though he's on his deathbed <laughs> <you> know, <laughs> helping helping um her mother but with mine you know he's a complete manipulator mm -hmm. so it's I don't know. I think that's just one of the caveats that makes this thing so fun because I think it is. I think it does bring a secondary character into into a, a more realistic type of person. Yeah, for sure. That's so cool. Um, I was going to say, Erica, do you have anything to add to that? Um, no, I think I think that was one of the fun things exploring some of the same people and some of the same places from different perspectives. Yeah. Um, some of our characters were at the same ball or at the same meal and had just a completely different view of it just because of who they were and where they mm -hmm. were at that moment in their lives. So Awesome. Well, so I think the one thing that we haven't mentioned is like, what are your stories about? So let's go ahead and Jana, tell us a little bit about what readers can expect in your part of the story. Um, in my story, it's about an estranged couple. They've been, um, they were married for a year and then separated for a year. And uh, my female protagonist has set up a, a like home gallery for women artists. And she's in desperate needs of funds because she needs to buy the building. And she just happens to have a trust fund that the Duke uh, has control over. 
and she gets her money when she's 25. She's 24 right now and she really needs it. So in order for her to get that money, the Duke has said, you've got to uh, reconcile your marriage with your strange husband. Mm -hmm. And so um, their whole story is about that. And my male protagonist is a little bit self contain self-centered from the standpoint that he has his own issues with mm -hmm. trying to make certain that his estate is running. And, you know, he just, he's kind of, you know, in some ways a typical man, meaning um, he doesn't really see outside of his own little world. He doesn't get the big picture. And so it's all about these two reconciling. And of course, there's lots of mistletoe that helps them find their way back to each other. Yeah. There's always something so magical about Christmas. Yes. Yes. <laughs> All right, Erica, tell us about your story. Uh, so in my story, um, the heroine, Louisa, is uh, has shockingly not made a match. Um, <laughs> several years, her, her mother is despondent and uh, wants her not only to get married, but to marry well, right? Like, you should play him the Duke, as one does, mm -hmm. like, like it's just that easy. I mean, it's easy. <laughs> and anybody who has ever dated knows that it doesn't work like Right, that. exactly. So when we all go out, we're like, we're going to get ourselves a Duke tonight, ladies. Yeah. Getting a Duke. Just <laughs> nab your casual prince who's just <laughs> single at the moment. Mm -hmm. And um, and so, yeah, that's not working well. And Louisa is uh, hoping to spend this Christmas, had been hoping <laughs> to spend this Christmas as her last chance kind of for freedom before the season started. What's supposed to be her last season. She will come hell or high water, have to marry somebody. Mm -hmm. And she is an aspiring poet which is frowned upon um, mm -hmm. not just by her mother but just in general you know like the whole bookish female thing was was not great and so it's kind of her her secret thing that she does and there's this other gentleman at the party who's very famous for being a poet and even though he isn't a lord or moneyed or anything like that he gets invited to all these things because he's this charismatic poet mm -hmm. but actually he's living a double life uh and so <laughs> in both cases uh they have a strong sense of family and both mm -hmm. of them make a lot of their decisions based on how it will reflect or affect other people in their family. And so it's also a story, not just of finding yourself, but of kind of finding that uh, di distinction between, you know, what, what you owe your family yeah. members and what, what loyalty should look like on both sides of that and what you balance for love. Oh my gosh. Well, that's so funny. Well, before you joined us, Erica, uh, Jan and I were talking about the show Succession, which I think is a show that definitely also kind of talks a lot about like, the what you owe your family and what you owe yourself and i think that having stories like that are so crucial because like we all go through that at some point with our families and our in our own relationships as they evolve that's beautiful <laughs> well i have a couple of questions in the um audience that i want to throw up since we're still talking about it um is there going to be a second book Who wants to know more about this duke uh erica uh, there are there are not plans at this moment, but if that changes, I am sure we will shout about it on all social media and our newsletters. Cool. Well, let's you know it's it's um, the book does takes place at Christmas time, a beautiful time of year. Um, but I would love to hear from you guys since you do spend so much time doing research. Um, what is one historical Christmas tradition that you would love to bring to the modern age? Um, Jenna, I'll go with you first. You can think about um, it. Don't feel pressured. Yeah, no. Uh, I love the idea of the Christmas pudding from the standpoint that you hide something in it, you know, and okay. whoever finds that ring um, gets to be like the, the queen or king of the day and gets a special gift and stuff. I think that that's really sweet. And I love that idea. Oh, yum. Yeah. What about you, Erica? Um, since I live so far from my family and have lived in, in various places, my family's been very far flung in several points in our lives, uh, I would not mind bringing back just the, the whole getting together for an extended length of time. The having the really short one afternoon or one evening Christmas party is not the easiest way to catch up with people that you haven't seen in a year or more. And mm -hmm. I, I just love the, you know, just the extended time that you have to play games yeah. or to talk or to have multiple meals and uh, really have quality time. Yeah, absolutely. I love that. Well, and another um, question is, what is one one um, historical outfit that you would want to wear to your holiday Christmas party if you were going to the mistletoe Christmas party? Uh, Erica. Oh, historical outfit. Um, I really like, I, I guess it's hard to pick one specific thing. I love the, I love the look. Uh, I love uh, wearing clothes from that era when I get the opportunity to dress up. 
Um, I like shoes. So I'm going to have to say I would have to go to the right place and get the perfect half boots that I would wear that would match uh, for tromping through the snow to go out on a promenade in the winter wonderland. Oh, that's fantastic. Everybody forgets about shoes. They're like, I would have a beautiful dress and blah, blah, blah. And the shoes are crucial. Good call, Erica. Love it. What about you, Jana? What would you want to wear? Uh, a velvet dress. Mm -hmm. I love velvet. So that would be it. Do you have a shade that you would want to wear? Uh, red. And if we're talking about shoes, I put I posted on social media. These are my oh, shoes for today. How and cute. yes, that, that's a snowball. I love it so much. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay, so Jana, what is one modern convenience that you could not live without if you were oh. forced to live in a, a non-modern age? Um, besides a shower, and I mean, <laughs> I'm talking about a shower that, you know, runs hot water all the time. Yeah. I, I think it's got to be my Keurig because I mm -hmm. drink coffee all day long. I mean, that would kill me to have to wait for 30 minutes to have coffee made. Yeah, absolutely. What about you, Erica? Yeah. Is it cheating to say the internet? I feel like it's my <laughs> separate brain. <laughs> Everything I do relies heavily on the internet. I would be lost. I would be a shell of a person. <laughs> so weird. It's like you have to, but then you also have to say, and computer, because it could be right. like the internet exists, right. but can you access it? <laughs> yeah, that would be deeply disappointing. <laughs> Very true. Oh my gosh. All right. Well, you know, you guys are incredibly prolific. So um, I know writing is always part of your day. And I want to get into a little bit about what your writing day looks like. But before we do that, what is one of your favorite distractions when you're avoiding writing? Jana. Social media. <laughs> It is. It is. You know, I get, I go through this routine. Oh, I got to just check, you know, Twitter just to make certain I'm not missing anything that's breaking. And then, you know, I'll swing around to Instagram and then I'll start scrolling on that. And of course, I've got to check out um, John and Noodle, you know, the bones or no bones noodle. day. Mm -hmm. I know. I, I love know. Noodle the Pug so much. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. And then uh, I make Facebook last because that's a place where I'll spend the most time because, we, you know, we've got our author page, we've got our groups, we've got, you know, just our regular profile. And I think um, it's nice to be able to connect with our readers, particularly after the, the last year and a half, two mm -hmm. years. I mean, you know, we've been pretty isolated and thank goodness for events like this so that we can actually make contact with folks again. Yeah, absolutely. What about you, Erica? I am addicted to newsletters. I, I think I subscribe <laughs> to a hundred of them. I, I love, love them. It. I, I, mm -hmm. I have like dozens of news newsletters, also science, psychology, race relations, pop culture, the climate, all, all that. Yeah. And, uh, and I have like a filter set up so it doesn't land in my inbox because I've learned the hard way. I will, I will never, <laughs> never get through the rest of it. There. Yeah. But, uh, but I know where it is. It's in, it's in the very first folder that's there. <laughs> so, you know, my morning coffee, I'm like, I will just read one and then, you know, 20 newsletters later, I look, uh -huh. oh, no, two, two hours have passed. Look up at the sun's in a different spot in the sky. And you're like, yeah. how'd that happen? It's now lunchtime. I'm exactly. like, oh. <laughs> oh my I'm gosh. informed. <laughs> I was going to say, um, you have, what's one newsletter that you would recommend that uh, we check out? Oh man, um, there are so many. I I subscribe to several of the New York Times newsletters. Mm -hmm. They have different categories of things that you can be interested in. I also like Next Draft, The Skim, Fast News Facts, um, The Root. Uh, there's, yeah. I, I could talk about newsletters so all day. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, me too, I love them. Um, okay, so Jana, what is your favorite writing fuel? Coffee. And um, gummy bears. Ooh, sour I or do. regular? I, regular. I'm, I'm kind of, yeah. <laughs> Do you have a brand of choice? Uh, I really like Trader Joe's. Oh, okay. Sweet. <laughs> yeah, I normally have a bag here, but uh, unfortunately I ate them yesterday, mm -hmm. finished them up, but I'll go to their saltwater taffy in a, you know, in a crunch. 
I love it. That's so funny. All right, Erica, what about you? What's your favorite writing fuel? Definitely team coffee all the way, especially living in Costa Rica. I think I would get kicked out if I said anything Ooh, else. That's true. <laughs> I bet it's wonderful. I bet it's just, I bet it's so good. It is. It is. Have you had a chance to go to um, a few of the plant, the um, coffee factories and plantations out there? Um, well, yeah, there's coffee places. Yeah, everywhere. Mm -hmm. And uh, there's, there's one that's near us, uh, but the, the best coffee is at a higher elevation. Mm -hmm. And so, um, yeah, we've, we've visited, we've taken friends when they come to visit and, yeah. and go check it out. And you know, like, so cool. like Starbucks buys a lot of coffee there, but only at certain elevations and mm -hmm. for certain uh, lands. So, yeah. That's so cool. Yeah, my um, my husband did a, a month in Costa Rica a few years ago, nice. and I got to visit for like a few days, and I was just like, I want to drink all the coffee. Oh. It's so good. <laughs> Love it. Um, okay, so let's see. Uh, already asked about that. Um, how do you guys recover from a particularly or recover unwind from a particularly uh, bad or challenging writing day, Erica? Um, I like to read actually like if, if I if I just want to escape into a world that I don't have to create myself mm -hmm. um, I will then open up my endless TBR and <laughs> allow myself that treat to just sit and veg in front of a book for a couple hours. I love that. What about you Jana? Um, <clears throat> I read too but I but I also try to get up and get away mm -hmm. you know which means that I physically get out of my office get out of the uh, out of our house and go somewhere, whether it be a museum or just for a walk or, or something like that. You know, it, it kind of clears the mind. It's almost like a, a filter that you have to clean out so that you can come back to it. I think that being creative, and, and I know that it, this sounds like I'm a broken record, but I, I really think that you have to be around people, at least for me, I have to be around people. I not necessarily be in their conversations, but I want to see how they interact. I want to see if I can pick up bits and pieces of their conversation because that'll trigger something in my own mind. And if you can't do that, I find it really tough. And it's not the same experience if you're streaming a series or something, you know, because that, that's, that's like reading a book, but mm -hmm. I mean, getting out into real life, I think really, really helps. And so that gets my yeah. mind off of it if it's been a really bad day but I don't know what a really bad day is I would mm. I would even say well and I'll tell you because I mean it's our job we know we have to get those right. words down whether Absolutely. whether it's um whether we're happy with it or not we just get them down so that we can move on because we can always come back and edit it uh particularly if Eric is around she can help edit uh no <laughs> But I, I think that one of the toughest thing is when you when you finish that book and you and you send it off to your editor, um, it it takes like a, a couple of weeks for me at least to recover to to get into the mindset ready to go back into that that writing world again and create mm -hmm. something new. That's awesome. I hope that well, answers your question. No, it totally did, and it also I'm just really uh, curious. Also, speaking of like you know, Erica Recht said she's got her books, and then going out into the world and just sort of refreshing yourself and refueling yourself. Um, one of the things that we always talk about at our book clubs is like what we're reading, watching, and listening to because those are the things that sort of allow us to escape from the regular parts of our days and just kind of connect with our reader friends. So I'm curious for you guys to tell us a little bit about what you have been reading, watching, and listening to. And listening can be audiobook, it can be um, podcast, it can just be like, a, sometimes I'll listen to the New York Times or the Atlantic has their articles that are audio. So, you know, something that you want to recommend. I'll go with Jana first. Um, the last great audio book that I listened to was L.J. Shin's um, The Devil Wears Black. Uh, I was driving uh, from Minneapolis to Kansas City and back, and I listened to it. And I mean, it was laugh out loud funny. And of course, mm -hmm. I always get stuck with my dog in the car. <laughs> my husband and I drive down separately because, you know, we've got different schedules and stuff. Yeah. And so I always have the dog. And the dog would just, you know, pop up from the back seat looking at me like, what are you laughing at? Is somebody else here? <laughs> but I really, really enjoyed that. I just uh, finished reading... Death by Laura Thallison, and uh, I enjoyed that whole series. It's kind of dark, YA, but it's it's it was really uplifting. And then today, I let's see, I downloaded. I'm going to start reading Megan Quinn's A Not So Meet Cute, mm -hmm. um, and I'm really looking forward to that. And then another L.J. Shin's Bad Cruise. So that's what's on my plate. I love it. Awesome. What about you, Erica? 
Uh, so audiobook, I have like three I'm working on at one time. <laughs> I've got um, <laughs> Michelle Obama's and Tiffany Haddish's. Uh, mm -hmm. And then I also have the Sherlock Holmes compilation of several audiobooks narrated by Stephen Fry. Oh, cool. Um, Ooh. So that, that's a lot of fun. That is so fun. And uh, for reading um, up next to my TV, I don't tend to read in genre while I'm while I'm writing uh historic romance specifically, but kind mm -hmm. of romance in general. Uh, but since I'm between books at the moment, I am looking forward to the new Lenora Bell, The Devil's Own Duke. I have that one up next. And I've been reading Suspense, so I, I kind of worked my way, glommed B.A. Paris's back uh, list and a few other authors uh, that were kind of new to me. I just read them all. all. <laughs> so I love that. Cool. All right, well, I have a question I'm gonna throw up on here for you guys. Um, what one thing uh, that became popular during the Regency period do you wish was still popular today? Um, let's see, Jana, you can go first when you're ready. Oh, I, I like the idea of getting out every afternoon and going um, for a walk promenade, you know, down, um, um, you know, Rotten Row. I'd love to be able to have a carriage, you know, with the big yellow wheels, the Phantom. Well, I wouldn't be driving the Phantom, but somebody else would be, <laughs> you know, and, and be able to go around through there. I, I think I think there's something kind of um, uh, just wonderful about that. So that would yeah. be my, my preference. Yeah. What about you, Erica? I was going to say that, so I won't. <laughs> I, I will, I'll pick something else. And so I'm going to say morning calls, which were in the afternoon. Ooh. And you oh. could call in anyone you wanted to. And you had the right to say you were not at home when you were and <laughs> avoid the calls you didn't want to. And people could leave their calling cards there on your mantle. And then you could pay that call back whenever. It was just kind of like a low key way of seeing all your friends or not, depending on your mood. Oh my gosh, I love that so much. Yeah, we've got people in the chat saying carriage rides. So yeah, people have opinions on that as well. That is so cool. <laughs> I love that. I'll be like, no, I'm not home. Sorry. <laughs> See you next time. <laughs> um, okay, so this is interesting because Erica being such an um, iconic editor, as we've learned today, <laughs> <laughs> I'm uh, curious to know for both of you, are you pantsers or are you a plotters or are you a Play platters. I don't know what the, the combo version of that would be called. <laughs> uh, Erica, I'll pick on you first this time. Team plotter. I have I have done both in the past for sure. Mm -hmm. uh, and it can be fun to just completely have no idea what's going on in the book. But I've discovered for me personally, if I do that, then there's a lot more work to be done at the end of the book as I have to redo everything to make it fit uh, and overall art or changing characters or whatever. So I definitely plot in advance. Um, and kind of extensive plots. But that said, I mean, I still get surprised every day when I'm writing. I'll know that I'm today Love I'm writing that. the scene where X, Y, and Z needs to happen, these specific plot points, but I, I don't necessarily know, like it'll say this is the ballroom scene and I don't mm -hmm. necessarily know what's gonna happen uh, exactly. So um, even with plotting, there's a lot of just playtime. Yeah, I love that. What about you, Jana? Uh, I'm a plotter too, as you can tell by the board back there. <laughs> yep. <clears throat> and I'll, I'll plot, and then I will actually try to sketch out a scene the night before. But like Erica, you know, sometimes you can go into a tangents and, and things like that. When we used to go to conferences, I, I was very fortunate to attend one with Joe Beverly. And, and she always, and this was on how she wrote her books and she called it Into the Mist. And what that meant was is that she'd just sit down every morning and whatever happened, happened. She was a true pantser. And I and I was just like, I could not do that. No. <laughs> Life depended on it. There's no way, you know, you get yeah. a gazillion different scenes, nothing connected. You know, so it but it's may funny how, finish. you may not, may not yeah, have yeah. finished the book. <laughs> right, but Joe was just, you know, I mean, she was a, a master storyteller. So it obviously worked for her, but you know, I don't know. <laughs> do you guys Erica, write? Mm, go ahead. No, I was just going to say, Eric, if we get to do the second book, maybe we should all do a, a, a pantser and see what happens. <laughs> just to see. <laughs> For the experiment. I like it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's like, yeah, you go from Christmas. What would be the next sort of thing? Maybe a, a summer party, like a summer picnic or something. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, love that. <laughs> so do we. Write it up. Get it out to us for next year, guys. <laughs> um, okay, so... Uh, 
what book world of yours or any yours or any other authors would you want to step into if you could? I'm just giving you guys a second to think about that. And then I'm going to ask Jana. Well, I mean, <clears throat> I think that it would have to be my first series, The Cavisham Heiresses. And the, and the reason why I do like that world is that there is um, the parents of the, the main characters and you know, they're, they're a happily married, very loving um, family. And because of that, I mean, that's where I would want to spend my time is with people that are truly happy with each yeah. other and, and enjoy each other's company. Um, and I think that that's yeah. the one. I love that. That's a great answer. Erica. I would have to pick the Wild Winchesters, which is uh, my, my current ongoing series. And that is because it, they're just so much fun. It is a found family of six orphans that each have special skills. They're basically like superheroes. They go out committing capers and uh, putting, <laughs> putting wrongs to right. And they just they have just great banter, great chemistry with each other. And uh, it just seems like it would be a blast every second of every day, all the shenanigans they get up to. So I would love to love to be part of their world. I love that so much. Ah, that's so cool. Um, so if you couldn't be a writer, what would you be? I know that Jana was a recovering lawyer, so you can't say lawyer if you'd like to again, but you can also come up with something else. Um, Erica, I'll start with you. Well, before I became a writer, I was a programmer. So I made software, databases, websites, that sort of thing for a long time. I had my own business doing that. Um, so I guess that is what, what I did do when I was a, a writer. Although I wouldn't say it was my calling. I'm definitely mm -hmm. much happier as a writer. Awesome. What about you, Jana? What would you be if you couldn't be a writer? Um. This is kind of, um, this goes back to my college days, but I always um, wanted to be a waitress. I never got the chance to be a waitress and I always wanted to do that. And I'll tell you why, because uh, yeah. I like to talk to people mm -hmm. and I'm pretty fast, meaning, you know, I don't waste time doing stuff. And I think I would have been a very successful waitress. <laughs> I love that. How long do you think you would have lasted as a waitress? Um, I would say probably not more than five years. Yeah. Okay. And, that, and that's been, well, because, you know, I mean, after a while, and particularly nowadays, how ugly people are. I mean, yes. you know, you get to the oh. point where you don't want to deal with it anymore. So, yeah. you know, I was like, five years is generous. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Maybe, maybe a park ranger. That would be fun, wouldn't it? Yeah, that would be really fun. You know. <laughs> Particularly if you were in like one of the um, national parks, like Yellowstone or, mm -hmm. you know, yeah, Grand I, Canyon. We had an author visit with us, a suspense writer a long time ago who had a book where the character was the ranger that goes and finds all the dead bodies in the park. And how Ooh. there are just litter, like just numerous amounts of unfound bodies hanging out in, in national parks and the rangers will just stumble upon them. And so like there's groups of people that their job is to just go and find the bodies in the national parks. Wow. Yeah. That's, wild. that's a great hook. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So who was your first book boyfriend or girlfriend, uh, Erica? Wow. Oh, man. Oh, I can't even I'm trying to think of names. Probably, <laughs> I mean, I would have been in elementary school. I definitely shipped myself with these characters mm -hmm. when I was like six or so. Seven or yep. eight. Mm -hmm. um, sorry, I guess. It's okay. You're a, you, you keep on thinking. Yeah, you think um, about it. You know, probably in elementary school, it would have been Archie from the Archie comics. Yeah. Um, and then Gilbert from the, you know, Anna Green Gable mm -hmm. series. My God, I love that kid. <laughs> I loved him. So, I wanted uh, to marry him. He was such a good, like if all men could just be Gilbert Life, like how sweet yeah. of that man. But we all want our Lori and he's a nightmare. But, yeah, but we all should yeah. really aspire for a Gilbert. <laughs> yeah. I love it. Yeah. Oh. So if you could, uh, if you were stuck in an elevator, with whom would you want to be stuck in that elevator? Uh, Jana. 
<laughs> you mean besides uh, Steven Tyler and Aerosmith? Um, I mean, that sounds great. <laughs> who would I want to be stuck in an elevator with? Um, maybe uh, Meghan Markle, mm -hmm. um, the Duchess of Sussex. I mean, I, I'd uh, I'd love to have a conversation with her. I mean, I think she's been through so much, and yeah. um, you know, just to see what the what the real Megan yes. feels a lot of the time. I mean, I think she shows you a lot about who she is, mm -hmm. but I think there's so much behind there that 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 is hidden because, you know, that that took that took a lot of courage, yeah, for both her and her husband to mm -hmm. to pick up and leave that and um, you and know and to flourish. Yeah, yeah, I think she's pretty amazing, and I'd love to be able to do that. Yeah, I agree. I, she's definitely on my like top five list of meeting yeah. one day. Would love yeah. to do that. Yeah. What about you, Erica? If I'm stuck in an elevator, I would definitely want to be with someone who can distract me from the fact that I'm stuck in an elevator. <laughs> Ooh, so I'm gonna, gonna have to pick like a comedian, pick like <laughs> Tiffany Haddish or someone mm -hmm. who I know is just gonna be hilarious the whole time and have something smart to say about everything. Yes. That's perfect. That's a great answer. It's like, yeah, because we're all going to be freaking out in this elevator and uh, let's just laugh our way through it. <laughs> I think it was um, in the movie, uh, what is it? Um, you've got mail when they get stuck in the elevator in that and they're all going around and they're saying like, oh, I would try to be a better husband or be there. And then like Parker Posey's like, oh, my nails. Like, just <laughs> don't want to be stuck with Parker Posey. <laughs> That's so funny. What is, um, so the, the last, we're all here sitting here virtually because we couldn't be in person. So we all know we've been going through so much in the last 18 months. Um, what, and one of the things that was bringing us a lot of relief and uh, readers were talking a lot about was that we were, we were finding ourselves gravitating towards comfort reads. And so I'm for, curious for you guys, if you are rereaders, um, what are some comfort reads that you like to gravitate toward when you are either in a, write, in a reading slump or writing slump, or just kind of want to have that sort of feel of just ah, coziness? Uh, Jana. Um, for me, last year, it was uh, Tessa Dare. And mm -hmm. uh, I reread her entire backlist and 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 wrote her and told her that you know it was in such a dark place for me mm -hmm. and that her books really um um helped me get out of it yeah mm -hmm. <clears throat> this book um um that i have coming out in in april i actually wrote it twice wow. during the uh 20 yeah what is this 2021 so 2020 yeah the first the first version of it was so dark and so then i went back and i i reread all of tessa's books and i was in a much happier place and mm -hmm. then rewrote it and and um my editor was very uh, uh empathetic and understood where i was and so you know awesome. that was my comfort read yeah that's great what about you erica I went and recollected in electronic format all of Julie Garwood's old historicals. Oh, I had read the paperback yeah. ones, so they fell apart in my hands like years ago. And that was my pandemic go-to. I mean, I know all those stories by heart. And I just loved rereading them and revisiting mm -hmm. those worlds again. It, it was just like Jenna said, the escape I needed and, and the humor and the lightness. And, the, you know, it's going to be okay mm -hmm. that I was looking for. <laughs> I love that. All right, so you guys told us what you're reading and what reading and listening to recently. What are some shows or movies that you are either excited about or that you want to recommend um, to our readers? Uh, I'll start with uh, I'll go with Jana again. Um, well, you and I talked about Succession. I really, really enjoyed that one, and mm -hmm. I really like Morning Show. Yes. That's one of my my favorites. <laughs> and um, movie wise, you know, I've really the the movies that i've been watching have been like jane austen mm -hmm. things i mean i went back and and watched emma several times that 2020 version i really really love that emma and period. i do have <laughs> i do too and and i will confess that last year i watched uh the 2005 pride and prejudice four times in a row <laughs> in one day no like four oh. days you know oh, okay I that's like, i know, find I just, that reason <laughs> yeah yeah you know i well, you get stuck on something. If it makes you happy, why yeah, not? You know, you're absolutely. not doing anything except sitting home and eating Cheetos, which was what I was doing. So, mm -hmm. yeah. 
Darcy doesn't judge. I mean, no. I mean, he does, yeah. but like, he, <laughs> I mean, he does. But. Yeah, he does. But he, he, he wouldn't judge you in that one. <laughs> it's his thing. It's kind of his thing. <laughs> What about you, Erica? <laughs> um, so we, I mean, we have different shows because we live in Costa Rica, but uh, I do have Netflix, although it is a different catalog. Um, yeah. Oh. And I've just been catching up on older shows mostly, like catching up, well, Umbrella Academy is kind of newer, uh, and then Leverage and shows like that. I've just been looking for things that were lighthearted, rompish mm -hmm. kinds of things. Awesome. I love that. Um, I'm just seeing if there's any other questions in the chat. I saw a couple pop up, so I wanted to make sure I was able to address them. Um, but I'm really dying because I, too, uh, read your newsletter, Erica, and I saw that you had some pictures of your Regency wedding. And I was just curious if you could tell our listeners and readers a little bit about, like, what you did. And I don't know. It was just so beautiful and, like, how the whole idea came about for you. Yeah, so actually it was really funny. The idea was my husband's, not mine. Everybody assumes that I oh, like, strong-armed cool. him into it, but it was uh, not that way at all. Mm -hmm. We we had basically planned to elope, which ended up having both our moms there as mm -hmm. well. So it was just the four of us. And he said, uh, let's let's have a themed wedding. Let's do this Regency. And my mother-in-law is a seamstress, so she made his his costume, his outfit, and he was so cute because he, he wanted to research it all himself. He wanted to Aww. just take complete control of that. And he was looking for actual patterns from the Regency era and asking me questions like, did I, did I think he would look better in 1813, 1817? Mm -hmm. you know? <laughs> and, um, and so, yeah, that was really cute. And so we got married at the National Theater in San Jose, Costa Rica, uh, which is the probably the, the oldest, fanciest building that we have is gorgeous. Uh, mm -hmm. It was also one of the first buildings to have electric lights. Um, Ooh. Fun fact, Costa Rica, mm -hmm. San Jose was one of, I think, the first three cities in the world to have public electric lights. Oh. So it, it is an old building with some new characteristics. And uh, it, we had just such a blast. And when we got there, um, of course, we're, we're dressed in, in costume when we arrived at the theater. And so we weren't sure at first if they were going to let us take the photos because, oh. you know, we, we didn't know if it was going to look, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. you know, like a random photo shoot, which it was. Um, <laughs> fair. Uh, <laughs> but they, they did let us in. And probably one of the funniest things was that no one else questioned it. Like the other people that were in the theater saw us, but no one was had any questions about why two random people from Regency era were... Walking just walking around, around. <laughs> but um, yeah it was really great that's so cute I love that I love that he took the initiative to want to do that himself and was like so gung-ho about that that is so charming <laughs> oh man did Jana do you think your husband would have uh, done a Regency wedding with you yeah I do I do oh. not when we got married but 10, 15 years later, oh, yeah, he'd be down for it, for sure. I mean, he dressed up as Elvis just for the kids for Halloween. So, you know, and if you knew my husband, he's not a big Elvis fan. But the fact that he would do it for the kids, there you go. Yeah. Oh, I love that so much. All right. We have another question in the chat. Someone pop that up for you guys. Oh, this is a great question. What titles do you guys have coming out in 2022? Uh, Erica. Uh, so in 2022, uh, the third Winchester book is coming out, which is um, Nobody's Princess. That's Graham's story. So it should be, uh, it, it's going to be a lot of fun. I actually just turned in edits for that uh, about a week ago, and I'm so excited. Awesome. I can't wait for, for readers to get their hands on it. Um, a lot of wild adventures. Uh, for the Wild Winchesters. And then I'm also doing a quartet with Grace Burroughs. Uh, that'll be coming out in March and April. So that's the Sirens Retreat Quartet. So it's based on an inn uh, in Brighton in the Regency era. And so kind of the, the love stories and shenanigans that unfold there along the sea. So that'll be a lot of fun. And they'll be coming out fortnightly. So through March and then the beginning of April for in a row. So that'll be a lot of fun. Oh my gosh, I love that. What about you, Jana? Um, in March, I've got 
an anthology that I'm going to be in with Kerrigan Byrne, Christy Caldwell, Amelie Howard, and Stacey Reed, and it's called Big Duke Energy. Nice. And yes, yes. <laughs> and then uh, in end of April, I've got the second in the Widow Rules series, Rules for Engaging the Earl comes out. And that anthology with all those authors that I mentioned, we're going to have another um, story come out each season. So we'll have one for the oh, summer, mm -hmm. one for the fall, and then one during the winter. That's so cool. Yeah. So guys, before um, I we say goodbye, because we're coming up near the end of our time with each other, I want you to take a moment, because you worked so closely together on this book, to take a moment and say something you know, say something nice about the person next to you, but just, you know, talk a little <laughs> bit, <laughs> um, just talk about like some of the qualities that you really appreciated working with, you know, Jana with, with Erica and Erica with Jana. Um, so I think that that would be cool to see your perspectives from the other side from each other. Uh, I'll start with Erica. You can go first. Sure. Uh, Jana, you have been a delight to work with. You're always so upbeat and optimistic and just totally willing to do what whatever the thing is that we're talking about. It, you were never needed to be talked into anything. You're always right there for any kind of brainstorming. And uh, it was you were very easy to work with. It was a lot of fun. Oh, thank you. Thank you. And I feel the same with you. I, I don't you know, I think you're one of the most generous um, authors that I've ever worked with, meaning not only with your time and, and uh, you know, we, we talk about the edits and things like that, but your promotion and, and um, being there, allowing us to come into your readers group whenever we have a new release and things. I mean, you're, you're truly one of the gems and I love your stories. So um, thanks for being such a great author. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, yay. I love it so much. All right, guys, before we say goodbye, um, I'd love it if you could tell our readers how they can stay in touch with you and find out more about you. Uh, Jana, you go first. Um, you can keep in contact with me by checking out my website, signing up for my newsletter at janamcgregor.com, my Facebook group, uh, Lords and Ladies of Langham Hall. Uh, I'm on Instagram and Twitter. So I'm everywhere. Love it. All right. What about you, Erica? Where can we sign up for our Erica Ridley newsletter? <laughs> yes, you can go to ericaridley.com. My <laughs> username is Erica Ridley everywhere. I'm on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, just like Tiana. I also have a book club on Facebook called Erica Ridley's Historical Romance Book Club, and you are welcome to join. We have uh, authors come in and talk to us all the time. There's giveaways of, of great books every week, so more the merrier. I love that so much. Well, thank you, Erica and Jana, for joining us today at Readers and Readers at Home and getting us kicked off with our first panel of the day. It was so lovely to see both of you. Um, I really, really appreciate your time. You guys can find A Mistletoe Christmas anywhere books are sold, uh, audio as well as uh, E and physical. Well, I'll just there show you it go. once more. Perfect. Yep, yep, yep. Yay, yep. Um, makes a great, you know, it is, of course, does make a great Christmas present. It even makes a better Thanksgiving Day present. You can bring that with you Absolutely. to uh, your family. Instead of a pie, bring a book. Um, but I really appreciate it. We're going to take a 10 minute break before we get started with our next panel, which is a mix of murder, mystery, and mayhem with authors, Mary Burton, Ooh. Leslie Langtree, Abby Collette, and Katie Richards. Um, they're going to be back here on the main stage at the top of the hour. But before I go ahead and dismiss you for our break, everybody, if you have the red ticket in your VIP box, I'm going to say that again. If you have the red ticket in your VIP box. You need to head over during this break period to see Sarah Reyes in the Fresh Fiction booth. Um, just go over to the Expo, push the Expo button on the left-hand side, and you'll be able to uh, go and show Sarah your red ticket and see what sort of prize you won. Um, and we're going to have these every single panel. So, you guys, make sure that if you have your VIP box and your stuff next to it, keep it next to you because there's little surprises in there. Um, but again, Erica and Jana, thank you, thank you, thank you so much. This was such a pleasure to spend my, my morning with you guys. Same here, thank you. Thank you. Hello readers. I am so sorry that I won't be able to join you even to yesterday. I was planning on being with you and looking forward to it, but unfortunately there's a family emergency and I have to fly to Minnesota. So. I can't be with you, but I hope you have an absolutely wonderful conference and a conversation. And if anyone has questions for me, just email me, Eloisa at eloisajames.com. Lots of love. Here's our red historical basket winner, 